Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wired Nerdy Podcast. This is season number two, episode number 31. My name is Keith. Doug, my BFF. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Good. Doing good. We had a, a really good time that last episode. Yeah, I, I really got to thank uh, Neo Ness, uh, not just for having a little celebrity status on our show here, but having a really, really good conversation. You know, I think we talked about having, uh, hey, we're only going to talk 45 minutes. We don't want to waste his time. You know, he's got some important stuff to do, whether he does or not. That's what we think. And then it goes to an hour and I'm kind of looking at you off the side. I'm like, okay, I don't want to interrupt this. And then boom, what, uh, hour 45 minutes or so. But I just have to give it up to uh, Neo Ness. Amazing conversation. Uh, great friendship, hopefully, in the future. So thank you I for totally, coming on. I totally agree. Like, he was so gracious with his time because, you know, we always shoot for 30 minutes, 45 minutes for an episode. And we told him at the beginning of it, we were like, hey, you know, if the conversation's flowing, let's, you know, let's just keep it going. Yeah. And it was so good. And I love that he wasn't just like a bison. He like was firing questions back at us. Yeah. And caught was, me off guard completely. I he was making us think. And uh the give and take in the dialogue, you're just so natural. Uh I'm just I've been a huge fan of his uh, you know, content for such a long time. And uh, you know, to meet him and have him be so kind, it it was awesome. So I, I had a blast in that last episode. I can't wait to have him on again. Yeah. I think I think it'll be awesome. So it's going to be fun, but we're back to our old format now. We're doing great. Yeah. Um, clicking along. Yep. Doing good. You know, took the words right out of my mouth. My mouth. I'm getting excited because we're back to a little wired nerdy news and, mm-hmm. uh, I've seen some good articles, but don't let me get ahead of myself. So. Now let's go ahead and let's do it. Let's, let's queue up the good, the, the good nerd news we have here. Uh, it's not like abundance, but it's good stuff. So let's queue yeah. it up. All right, let me get the screen share up and going here. The first thing that I'm sure is on everybody's mind is uh, there's a new uh, Nintendo 64 out. Dude, I saw this, and it is so cool. Okay, disclaimer. N64 was not my favorite console. Um, It's a great console, don't get me wrong, and there were some good games for it. And I owned one, I had one, but... I never was like super crazy about the style of um, the you controller's know. a little weird. Yeah, but with this, there's a new controller along with it. So, Analog is a company that they did a Game Boy variant, if you remember, not too long ago. The Analog Pocket, yep. you can put Game Boys in it. So, this company has been redoing old retro um, consoles, and you can actually use the original cartridges in it. And as you said. Nintendo 64 is next up on the list. Let you, let you give the deets on the rundown. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at the console for those uh, that aren't uh, with us by video. We're looking at a uh, very similar design of a original N64. The controller, totally different. You know, you kind of got the three little uh, pieces that come down uh, for the original um, Nintendo 64 controller. This one looks very similar to the standard playstation xbox uh configuration i actually have one of these in my closet a USB C n64 controller for all my emulation it looks very much just like this and uh, i think it's way easier to use but there's something about holding that original uh n64 controller that just brings back so many memories yeah i mean this thing is topping out at 249 dollars it'll launch in 2025 the design looks like the original, but like super thin down. It, it it looks really nice. And I love the controller because I was not a fan of the yeah. M64 OG controller. Um, it's my favorite. Learning. Well, and we're going to talk a little bit later on today about, you know, on our main topic of, with the season. But N64 may come up in that conversation. But my favorite games on N64 were the WWF wrestling games like No Mercy. Uh, WrestleMania 2000, th- those were the best, mm-hmm. um, hands down. But um, I-, I love what they've done. It's a wireless controller, but it can also take the original uh, three-pin connectors. And they have different colors. They have a white variant. Um, and, of course, it has HDMI, and I'm sure it's doing upscaling on the graphics as well. Yeah. This is cool. I, I got to say that. I it's love that they're cool. doing this. Yeah, this this caught me off guard. Now, I am not really 
uh, into the analog, uh, like their product line and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I had to do a little research. I, um, looking, they have the analog pocket. They also have the analog Mega SG. That's for mm-hmm. your uh, Sega Genesis Master Systems. Yep. Uh, the uh, Super NT for your Super Nintendo. They got all kinds of stuff on their website. They do. And what's different about them is they're not using like original motherboards and chips that were in the console, but they are using FPGA technology. Now, if you don't know what that is, those are chipsets that basically play the original content as it was intended. So it's not emulation. Let's be clear about that. So you won't have any lag. The colors will be correct. So it's not, think of it as it's not, it's not the original N64 motherboard in it, but it's a newer chipset that basically can play native cartridges and you'll have the right color uh, and everything else. Now that gives them a, an advantage of having like an OS layer on top of it uh, for operating systems. Um, and they actually have a screenshot of what they call the 3D OS, which is so cool. Uh, so you're going to get a new interface with it. I, I think this is this is so cool. And the price isn't bad. Like, no. you know, I mean. In the terms of consoles, you know, we just looked at the uh, PlayStation Pro running at uh, less uh, sub $1,000. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what's also cool about this is that it keeps, well, we just had Ness on, right? We were talking about physical game collecting versus digital. This kind of keeps that physical game collecting alive because, it, you know, you, you don't have to use your original N64. You could use this if you have a collection of N64 and it takes up far less space. It does upscaling with HDMI. Um, I, it's, I think this is awesome. I put this in the same category. We talked about how limited run will take old games and repackage them. Uh, as physical variants to keep things going. That's what this is kind of like, but more on the console level. I think it's really cool. I yep, I think it's really good. And you're looking at, uh, and they said it, it upscales, by the way, to 4K, which is pretty cool. Um, the controller costs about 40 bucks. You could just get the controller if you wanted to and use that. Um, and then the actual console itself is running, as we said, about 250 That's not bad, man. Not at all. Yeah, pre-orders will start later in October. So that's a good find, man. I'm excited about that. I think that's neat. I hope they do this with other consoles. Uh, can you imagine, like, uh, PlayStation 1, oh, 2? Yep. I mean, that's awesome. Hope I'm going to have to start collecting at these <laughs> retro cons. <laughs> all these cons, Brian, as this work. Yeah. You know, sure. I've just noticed in all the excitement of the news that uh, I'm uh, a little verklempt. So I'm going to add a little light to my face. Oh, you didn't turn your lighting on for people at home. Oh, it just looked like he had a tan. Oh, look at that. He's illuminated now. Okay. No. I thought it's kind of dark in here. There you go. Now I can see your, your smiling face. All right. Let's move on to the next thing. Uh, let's you tackle this. We've had this conversation before. <laughs> You know, Star Citizen, and we've talked about it, uh, just to kind of give it real quick. It is a alpha. Am I saying that right? It's a game in alpha that is still uh, funding, still getting lots of money. The thing about it is, uh, and I didn't really explain it for those out there. It's it's a uh, game where you're out in space and you're making ships, collecting ships, doing uh, space runs. So it's a space themed game. Yeah, space Uh, simulator. Yeah. So yeah. with that being said, tons and tons and tons of money. I mean, I've seen one ship go as much as 32000 and that's yeah. not $32,000 in game credit. That's 32000 real dollars, which yes. just blows my mind. We have an episode from last season where we had our friend Alex Bond on as a guest, and he is a foremost uh, enthusiast of Star Citizen, if you remember. And he was telling us about this. And, you know, the game's kind of taken on a cult status. It is free for all. You can go anywhere in these little pockets of the universe. Uh, You can do missions. You can be a pirate or you can be a a police officer. You can do anything you want. The promise of the game is massive. The big controversy, of course, is since it's crowdfunded, meaning that the company that makes it, which is Cloud Imperium Games, uh, they decided not to go with a traditional publisher like EA or you know, any any one of the the big the big players, and they're self doing it themselves, and that's why people are investing money in it. I invested 
12 years ago in this game. And I do have an account. I pop into it every so many mom- months and I check it out. It is not optimized at all. You know, I have a pretty beefy rig and it, it struggles sometimes. Um, but it, where it's getting to a point of, of people are just getting start starting to get worried. It's been alpha this entire time. You can see this chart on the screen here. Dude, we're just talking $700 million people have spent on this game and it hasn't even hit a beta yet. Yeah. So, yeah. And they quietly, it points off, they quietly laid off an estimated 100 to 150 staff members out of their Austin and LA officers. So it's calling into question, is this just a money cash grab? Is it ever going to be ready? I mean, the promise of the game is really cool. Um, it does have like a, a, a cult status tied to it, but geez Louise, as it continues on with investment, it just makes you wonder if it's ever actually going to come to market at all. So. You know, my thought, and it's just the thought is this is a long con. I mean, <laughs> uh, that from the beginning, that's my thought. That's what people's it's- concerns are. Now, I, the reason why I got into it, the guy behind this is Chris Roberts. Chris Roberts is a video game, famed video game developer. Back in the 90s, he made my OG Wing Commander game series, and he made Wing Commander Private. I love those games. That's what really got me into gaming hardcore. And so I believed in it. And that's why I was like, oh, well, if Chris Roberts is doing it, then it's got to be good. Uh, and it is. It's not It's not bad. It's just really buggy, man. I've had weird things where my character will just fall through the you know through the space oh. station floor oh, right? because it's a, it's an alpha right uh but it's in development hell the thing just never ever seems to to turn it around so it'll be interesting to keep an eye on this bad boy i may be out the money luckily i haven't invested as much as alex bond did <laughs> i've only invested like 45 bucks oh, into well, it you so yeah you know alex bad. would never give us a total figure of what he spent <laughs> he just said it was substantial yeah. <laughs> that's what he said <laughs> but he did let on how many ships he owned which was insane so poor guy <laughs> we'll see yeah. what happens with all this so if you all want to check that uh, out it is season one episode 37 star hey. citizen with alex there you Great go conversation there hey good call up on the, uh, hey, the episode yeah. there thank you all right next up you take it Next up, uh, I have to get back. To... Oh, he doesn't even know what I'm looking oh, at. Oh, FTC yeah, for the win. There you go. <laughs> I was down in the uh, year one list. There so you go. the FTC, uh, those people we love that uh, ruined uh, Bob and Tom, as well as many other uh, programs that I enjoyed before they got censored, is uh, actually doing something good for once. Uh, the, the other stuff is good, I'm sure. But they are helping you cancel memberships. The way this uh, says talks about is that it's really hard to cancel uh, memberships, say streaming services, cable, satellite, or even your gym membership uh, down the street. So reading into this article, they are adopting a way for the click to cancel rule. Instead of going through all kinds of talks and all kinds of upsells, uh, one personal example for me is trying to quit DirecTV is <laughs> so tough. You know, they upsell you, upsell you. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll give you a couple months free. You know, I've had some internet companies do the same thing. <clears throat> Charter cable, but uh, cables. Anyways, uh, keep going. <laughs> this but is I big think for of, you because yeah, the, overall, this is a good idea. You like hop around on services, and I admire that about you. You're like one of the only people I know. Like, if you're not like you watch you binge watch what you want and then you cancel yep. it and then like I, honestly that's a great idea and i think i'm gonna I strive to learn do the that. best from my brother you know i thought he was crazy for hey i'm gonna watch this and then cancel it and then i'll pick it up later perfect so the one i recently watched was on amc i did not own amc plus but i loved uh snow piercer so mm-hmm. i just picked up amc for about a month or two i binge watched snow piercer it's in its final season, and then I canceled AMC. It's a great idea, especially with the rising cost of all of these streaming services. Um, and by the way, just so you know, Doug, I, I didn't have this article open. I had the wrong one open, so it took me a minute to get to it. <laughs> but I got it up. Oh, uh, they don't need a visual reference. <laughs> That's good. Not for this one. But yeah. now, being being the click to cancel, like, did at any point did they say this is something they're going after? They didn't say when they may try to. Um, um, implement something like this 
Yep, I believe uh, everything goes into effect 180 days after it's published in the Federal Register. Okay. I believe it's already a bill, if I read it right. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of these companies have that 180-day period to uh, put this into effect with their own company and their policies and procedures and stuff like that. It's an interesting uh, comment that they have in here. It said that the click to cancel rules are part of the FTC's broader crackdown on shady subscription practices. Earlier this year, the agency sued Adobe for offering deceiving dis subscriptions that were hard to cancel. The FTC also sued Amazon over claims it tricked people into signing up for a Prime and slammed yeah. Microsoft's recent changes to his Xbox Game Pass subscription. Interesting. And by the way, Adobe... If you ever had Creative Suite for like Photoshop, oh, it is a pain to cancel. That Not is good. so true. Oh yeah, that, so that's legit. That's legit. But, wow, cool, good find, man. I didn't know that they were doing this. Yep, very cool. All right, on to the next one. Boom. Yeah, I'll a keep going. You know, uh, we talk about AI a lot, and uh, I'll t I'll hold my thoughts because I uh -oh. don't know if you think the same thing as I do. Uh oh. But uh, so. Parents are suing a son's local high school teacher after uh, the son's AI cheating was punished by the teacher. So in terms of the son used uh, some kind of AI, whether it's ChatGPT, Gemini, or other, to do his homework, got in trouble, and the parents are saying shame on the school for getting him in trouble. Wow. So my thought. If you uh, want to know it, uh, yeah, I want to know your thoughts. I'm, I'm kind of glancing. I'm totally through. on the side of the school. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've talked about this before, and uh, I worry about it as well. Is AI going to replace just common general knowledge, learning from a book, learning from a lecture, or performance style learning? Yeah, are we just going to be so reliant on AI to tell us the answer that we don't even learn it ourselves? So that's that's, that's my. my thought. That's my concern. So for me, I love what AI is doing in the fact that it has streamlined a lot of uh, work practices. It's really good at ideation, brainstorming, coming up with a first draft, but you can't just trust it wholesale for that. You should inject your thoughts, your perspective and modify. It's fine for first draft, but you got to modify and put your own spin on it. Um, so I'm a fan of what it can do uh, yeah. when it comes to productivity. Absolutely. However, I do worry like you that uh, it will become a, for lazy people, it will become a, um, a, a tool that enables laziness. Now this is the, the challenge for education organizations is one, they got to come up with an AI policy yeah. Two, they, they have to educate people. Here's the problem that I see both at not high school, but even also at the higher education level. Many organizations are just saying, don't use AI. It's bad, blah, blah, blah. And they're running it through like plagiarizing software and all that kind of stuff. I don't think that's the way to go. Yeah. I think what public schools and universities should be doing, I think they need to have what I would call an ethical AI use class. And it's required by everybody. And then what they should do is teach them how to use it responsibly, meaning yeah. actually walk them through, say, hey, you have a paper that's due. What's the right way to use AI? And then walk them through it. Or, hey, you have a math problem. What's the right way to use AI? They should be educating people how to use the tool as opposed to just, you know, creating this Romeo and Juliet scenario in which they say, don't use it. Because then the appeal is going to be pretty strong. So. I'm with you. I'm on the side of the school on this and the fact that I, I think it's it's a tough thing to regulate. I do think that schools in general need to take a very assertive approach in teaching people how to use the tool. I don't think they should ban it. I think that they need to instead educate on how to use the tool. To me, this is no different than if spell checker was integrated and they said, hey, this is how you use spell checker. This is how you use the grammar checker. They should be taking the bull by the horns and teaching the students how to use it, what they expect them to do and what they don't expect them to do. And give the examples that, you know, it's wrong for you to just type in the prompt, copy and paste, submit assignment. No, that's my take. So. Nope, I'm in total agreement. Uh, kind of summing up it, what I said again, it just uh, I don't want it to replace the uh, learning that can happen. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. You got to teach people how to how to think.
Yeah. And so we'll see. This is going to be a problem, though. It both. This is also going to be a problem for workplaces, let's be honest. Oh, it's, absolutely. Yeah. So to me, I, I think the solution is not is not just what I said for education. Workplaces should do the same. They should have CBTs in education. That's required of all employees about how they can use AI effectively in the workplace responsibly. You know, I think it's that, stupid just to be like, no, you can't use it. People are going to use it. You can't stop that. The unfortunate thing, I think, in your NIT is you're going to have to create AI to detect AI. Yeah, they already have tools like that, too. Yeah, they can do that. So it gets it gets complex. All right. This last one's interesting. It's an it's odd very interesting marketing thing. So Alien Romulus came out this past summer. It went back to the roots of the Alien franchise and being scary. I heard it was supposed to be really, really good. I I, I did not it, personally see it. Did you watch it? I did. I enjoyed it. Did you I like it? I think it did get back to the very dark, kind of hard to see uh, worlds yeah. and ship uh, interiors and stuff. That's awesome. It, we talked about the popcorn buckets, too, if you remember. The popcorn our... buckets were really cool. They had <laughs> a uh, xenomorph head and yeah. then... Uh... The face hugger cup. But, like yep, one. that was it. Yep. Yeah. Well, what they're doing is Alien Romulus is getting a VHS release. It's a limited edition, fully functioning VHS tape version of Alien Romulus, which will be available in December. That's kind of a, a cool marketing. It's a throwback to the, the old days. What's weird is, like, how would you play it? Because I, do you still have a, do you have a VCR? I do not. But while we were talking about the last thing, I went on eBay. There are a ton of VHS players on eBay. What's the price? Thirty seven dollars or best offer. Okay, that's not too bad. That's I have not, not found bad. a new one yet in the box. There's a there's an ebb and flow on on VCRs. I don't know if you know this. That price of what you just saw will go up and down. Oh, my absolutely. my wife's grandmother needed a new VCR because she has tons of tapes. And at one point it was like 2 years ago when they were VCRs were hard to come by. Yeah. Cuz there's not a lot of them being made aftermarket still, so you have to get an old one. And um we I think we ended up spending like 100 bucks on a used one because at that time it was it was tough to to find one, so I don't know, man. That's interesting. I, I, I think the car, crossover's cool. I think this will be a collector's item uh, to hold on to. I, I don't know. I'm wondering about like the ratio. Like, it's not HD. Like, what would it yeah. look like on your TV? Would it put the letter boxes on the side? Like, I, I don't know that either. You know, how do you even hook up an old uh, VHS player? Because uh, most they TVs have converters. now, I've seen they're getting away from the uh, component cables and the AV cables. They are. You'd have to go on Amazon and you'd have to buy an RCA to HDMI plug. They yeah. do have those. Okay. They do have those. So that that's what you have to do. I don't know. I, I love the idea about it because it's throwback. I, I love the marketing behind it. Uh, but I don't know how feasible it is to actually like watch it. Uh, that's my take. The other thing you got to do is get your markers ready because if that uh, VHS player starts pulling your tape out, <laughs> you're going to have to wind it on back. Oh, man, be kind. Rewind. Oh. Do you remember that? Hey, we had a rewinder for rental movies. I always there. wanted one. You we know what's funny? Yeah. <laughs> My dad would get, like, he would always tell, like, when you rewind, he'd say, you're going to wear out the VCR, you know, like, when you'd have to rewind it. Oh, yeah. And that's why you'd get a rewinder. Yep. Now we're showing our age. I don't know how much it costs. I know my grandparents had one because all the kids go to grandparents' house, watch yeah. all the VHS tapes. Yeah, yeah, totally. Anyway, all right. That does it for the nerd news on that one, man. Yeah. So. I, mean, I think that wraps it up. Uh, it does. Some pretty good articles. Uh, we've missed uh, nerd news for a while, so it's good to well, yeah. Th- there's some, some stuff. Some good, good finds there. So we're, you know, at the time of this recording, we're headed full on into the fall here in the Midwest, the trees are starting to turn yep. and Doug and I try to like keep it theme wise, you know, and we're going to do something that's, you know, very synonymous with fall because not only do we obviously have uh, Thanksgiving, things like yep. that, but I always think of uh, football, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, spoiler alert, I'm not a sports guy. I don't watch football. I'm not. I'm like when Doug's like, hey, I'm going to watch football. I'm like, go with sports. You know, yeah. I was in the 90s when I was a kid. I was a huge sports fan. You know, Chicago Bulls, you know, oh, yeah. 90s when Jordan was there. I loved when Joe Montana was with the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, so I know 
I, I know how the sports are. I, I, I know of old, you know, but I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a sports bro nowadays, okay? But I don't knock it. I know it's very popular. But there is one thing I do really enjoy, and it's weird. I love video games. I Absolutely. love sports video games. And yeah. that's our main topic for today. We're gonna talk about our best picks for this time of the year, being in the fall, being around Thanksgiving. What are some good football games to go back to to enjoy the fall? What are your thoughts on that, Dougie? You know, that's a big question because I started off in the NES world. That's uh, mm-hmm. where I started. Yep. Uh, Super Nintendo kept going on and on and on. And uh, we were big into football, big into all kinds of sports and stuff. Uh, I think the first one I started with, and I didn't put it on a list, but the first one I started with was Tecmo Bowl. Tecmo Bowl is huge. that's yeah. a lot of uh, other people. people's first start. Yeah. yeah. They, they did it well first. Yeah, if I remember correctly, and I and I wish I could tell you what was the first football game I got into, but it's definitely later in the timeline because I would have been like in high school. Some of the ones that we're actually going to talk about here. So let me go ahead and get this bad boy up. So the first one, and we kind of talked about this when Ness was on here. Uh, we have love for the Dreamcast, the Sega Dreamcast. Now. It did not do great console-wise. Uh, it got beat out by its competitors, uh, the PlayStation 2. I think the Xbox, the very first Xbox, came around around this time. But I will tell you what, and we have gameplay footage up here. The football games, the sports games on the Dreamcast were chef kiss. They were now, beautiful. Yeah. I know you're going to get on rants here in a bit about your your picky things that you have about football games. Yeah. Let me tell you my yeah. thing, Okay. And it goes into why I love this version. Football games to me, like, it's all about the controls. If they're tight, if I can, like, if I can feel like I can really do the tackles, if when the play's going, it, you know, I don't, I don't want it to be too difficult to where I, no. it drives me nuts. We'll talk about Madden here in a bit. Madden always had this weird feel to me to where I, I get my butt kicked in at all the time by the computer, right? On this version, this was probably one of the first like 3D football games on Dreamcast where I felt like I could actually play it and not get my my ass kicked by the computer because I'm not I'm not good at them and yeah. I, it's partially I don't know a lot of my plays but I just like trying variety of a running play in order to get my downs but the controls on the N2K series was so tight that it was just so much fun to tackle. And I felt like I could actually make progress on it. So that's my rant about football games. They got to have tight controls. What's your take? Did you play this? I did play this a lot. Uh, NFL 2K1, 2K2, 2K2, yep. tongue twister there. Uh, both on the Sig- or Dreamcast. Yep. You got My it. My tongue's not working today. You got but it. yeah, uh, the thing going into this, not a lot of complicated controls. And super easy. The rant I have, and the rant I have for every uh, football game from now on is franchise mode. Well, what if I don't want to play franchise mode? And I haven't played the latest uh, Madden. I haven't played it, the latest uh, NCAA since it's come back. But my complaint is franchise mode. So we're looking at some video from NFL 2K on the Dreamcast. It had season mode. So you just pick a team and you play, play the whole, the whole season. season. Yeah, it's you simple. don't have to worry about your arena or your stadium. Don't have to worry about coaches or any so of this other stuff. It's franchise mode, basically like fantasy football, where you control the entire league. It's more than that. On some of them that I played, you're controlling... The money at the stadium, you're controlling oh. all kinds of stuff. Really? And See. you are controlling like trading and drafting and all that. I didn't really care about that. I wanted to pick a team and just mm. play the whole season straight to the Super Bowl. That kind of reminds me of the, uh, I mentioned the the wrestling games. It kind of reminds me, they have that a GM mode also uh, yep. in like WWE 2K24. Or, and you, you have to set like, you know, the cost of how much you're spending on pyro and all yeah. that and ticket pricing and all that. And it so it takes away from the action, I think. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't the know other that. complaint I have is controls. You know, I've seen the evolution of Madden where it has finesse controls or spin and juke and don't you like arm. take and on that, if I remember right, don't you take the uh the analog stick and you have to like roll it real quick yes. in order to juke? Like and on this did it for passing as well. It took away <sighs> some of the natural I can't stand it. Why all that uh, control? And it I don't did like with that. the 
Mm-hmm. So now uh, the things that I don't like about fighting games is coming to football. You have to do some combination. Oh, really? Your move. Yeah. Oh, see, what I love about this version is that I remember and we'll talk about another one here in a moment. But um, I remember it was as simple as when you threw the ball. If you just hit one button, you can put your arm out for like a yep. Heisman to like it was easy to, to it was stop perfect. him or to spin. You hit a button like it was so easy. So easy. And this stands up. I played this. You you actually sent me a screenshot of your your Steam Deck. I actually played this last week. Did, yeah. And it got me. I went back and I played it. It's still yeah. it, holds it still up. holds up. Yeah, it holds perfect. up real well. Yeah, it's good. So, yeah. all right, we'll go on to the next one because we have a few to get through here. Yeah. I didn't play this one a lot. It was on the insane. The graphics look so goofy to me. <laughs> I'll let you introduce it. So NFL Blitz, if you don't know, it started off in the arcades and then it came it to the home consoles. So really, it is everything that the XFL wanted to be. <laughs> wait, wait, can you body Can you body slam? You and... body slam people. You can hit them on fair catches. On I did play the... this. <laughs> I did play It was this. amazing. I and played then, the arcade version more than I did the N64, though. I was yeah. hoping they would show it. But after the play, you can go and you can, like, body them. slam them yeah. on the ground. Yeah. You can, like, suplex them and, like, throw them. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a, it was a good gimmick. I will say that. It's fun. But the controls for this one as well were very easy. They were tight. You know, you kind of yeah. throw to the highlighted guy. It doesn't really have the, high, the hovering buttons of mm-hmm. which receiver you want to throw to. But it was super easy to control. This reminds me it was in the same vein as NBA um, Jam. Jam. And, yeah. Yep, where it's just kind of – he just body slammed him. There you go. Uh, yeah, where it was, it's very arcadey and it puts in the fighting elements. That's what this always kind of reminded me of. I do remember I, – I never really played this for N64, but the arcade version was really good. I really liked it. It was really that. good. You know, it had similar things to NBA Jam. You had Turbo. Uh, there's Turbo and NBA Jam to kind of speed your player along. But then some of the uh, cheats, as you would call, if you're a cheating person, was hilarious. You know, Team Big Heads, uh, Team Tiny Players. Yes, so you'd have I these that. little tiny micro people. You couldn't even see them. That's hilarious. And That's you awesome. know, as uh, old as this sounds for me, and uh, it wasn't too long ago, I would take a cheat sheet to the arcade so I could put in the codes and play at the arcade. That's awesome. That's so cool. Did they? I, I'm sure they had cheats on the N64 too, right? Oh, I believe they did. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next one. That's a unique one. All right. This next one, I didn't. This is PlayStation One, and I didn't play this, and I, it looks really dated. Uh, this is NCAA yeah. Game Breaker '98, right? This has a lot of uh, fond memories for me. And, you know, we talked to Nia Ness about my family always got together in an old farmhouse all there, and we got to play season mode. So Mm -hmm. I pick uh, Nebraska because I was told not to pick Missouri by my uh, brother and we play a season together. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But uh, what I love about this was, at the time, amazing graphics. You got to realize, at the time, PS1, (laughs) this was like... These graphics are amazing. True, true. And then uh, juking, spinning, stiff arms, stuff like that. They were so easy to do on the uh, PlayStation 1 controller. So now, the, this was pre-DualShock controllers as well. That, that was my next question. You stole yeah. my question. I was say, so did you have DualShocks or not? So you're this using the... This is pre-DualShock. Uh, so this is D-pad. This is not... Yes. Okay. All right. That's really cool. And I, and I know that NCAA has been kind of a miss in the football world up until recently, right? Yeah, uh, we talked about that before. They took a hiatus, and I know, um, and I'm kind of worried for your brothers because he had a NCAA game that was really, really high. And I'm like, "Hey, uh, Brian, why is it so expensive?" He said, "Well, they don't make it anymore." So I've uh, been talking to him, trying to track that price and see how far yeah, down it goes. How it's turning because they just released a new NCAA. They're back yep. into and it. And I have like heard more. nothing but rave reviews for it. I heard it was good too, actually. Um, I'm hoping that on my PlayStation streaming service that it'll get added, so I don't have to buy it, yep. and I can try it. And if I do, then I can pick it up. But so, this, I think this, the yeah. downfall for old football games is the roster update. Yeah. So with the internet and all our glorious yeah. things now, you can update all the rosters. You can actually have the uh, players. Yeah. And with the uh, NIL, don't ask me what it stands for, but now that players are getting paid for their appearances and stuff, you're really going to see their names. So if you're looking on here, it says number 11 is a quarterback. Yeah. I believe nowadays you'll actually have the name of the quarterback. 
Well, and that's the big thing with the NCAA, though, is that with college football, you didn't really, on a lot of the games, you didn't have the names. They were generic, yep. if I remember correctly. But obviously with the, the big names, you know, you're going to have, you know, Emmett Smith and those big oh, names yeah. and stuff like that. So. so I just had to pick this out just for nostalgia and family memories. And it's good. Uh, it was a uh, really good. Uh, I'm enjoying time. watching. I need to pick this up. I, I may try this one on my. Uh, I'm sure I have it on the ROMs. I have to pick this one up. I never played this one much. It looks. It looks yeah. interesting. Yeah, I like it. All right. Now this one's near and dear to my heart. Yeah. This is. We had a Sega CD growing up. And this is Joe Montana's NFL football for Sega CD. Now, they also had it for Genesis. But what I loved about this was the announcers, because it was a CD, actually announced things. It's a little jerky, but the controls on this I really liked as well. Um, and I played the, I would dare say, I probably played this the most out of any football game. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. And I was a huge Joe Montana fan with Kansas City Chiefs. I loved Marcus mm -hmm. Allen. Derek Thomas, all those in the 90s. So I think that's why I liked it uh, was because it was a, a team that I, you know, actually liked. So, yeah. So, yeah, it was good. Did you ever mess with this one? I did not. I messed with a couple on Sega Game Gear. I almost said the wrong thing. Sega yeah, football Game, and Gear, Game Gear, I had some uh, football games. Okay. That's pretty cool. I liked it because, if I remember right, it this had, like, actual little videos in it. Again, being a CD. Um. It was. It had a little bit more, and the music was good. Uh, I'm clicking through here. There you go. There's there's a version of it. That's a little better. Now the frame rate. You notice it's a little chunky. It's a little chunky on that. Uh, but what was awesome, I do remember. There's a button you could hit that allowed you to dive. And what was funny that I, you could like pretty much use that to always kind of, you know mess with the system you could always dive like if you do i would dive and dive and dive just to get over and the it line just of got you that extra oh, always because it's it's like the game had an issue with um the collision for for tackling and when you dove it like the guys would go like kind of through you oh, so nice. it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a trick but now i played the crap out of this game this is okay one. okay this is kind of funny because i looked up uh game gear football games mm -hmm. and i played joe montana football on the game gear i think they had like an exclusive deal with sake at the yep. time that's why they were doing that so, so i'm looking at the screens and that's exactly the one i played i also played uh madden 95 it looks like 96 you said game gear i didn't even know they had it on game gear yep oh wow look at that oh here we go i found it oh okay they, yep. no, of course, an ad oh, pops up. Advertisement. Yeah, you know that, but uh, but I didn't. So it's it was top down, and not it was. 3D. It was kind of okay. hard to control because you're going sideways. Sideways, a little techno uh, mode. Game Gear screen so tiny. Plus, yeah. uh, you need five thousand batteries. Oh backup. yeah. Oh yeah. Huh. I never played this. Interesting. Good version. Hm. Awesome. All right. Let's get into your mad. Now you found this awesome channel that i'm gonna subscribe to they're called video game evolution we were talking about madden and doug found this it has every version on here so you can see the evolution of it yeah um, big shout out to video games evolution if you will go on give them a subscribe i looked through some of their catalog history if not catalog history i'm sounding old some of their other videos they do tons of stuff. They do the Laura Crofts. They do uh, other video games like or sports games like uh, the hockey stuff. Uh, we should do that one time because I love some of the hockey games out there. Oh, yeah. There were some good ones on that. And it, it, just for note, it started in 1988 was the first Madden. It was on PC. And so now it's stepping through. And it's interesting to see the evolution. I think it's up to 91 now. Yeah. And it's interesting to see the evolution. That's it's funny. not bad. Look how chunky it is. That's crazy. I didn't play Madden a tons, even in the old ones. Uh, I played a little bit of the modern ones. Um, the Super Nintendo versions, this is the Genesis one in 91 they're showing, but I like the Super Nintendo one. There it is. There's 93. I think I probably played this one quite a bit. But I was a huge fan of the Super Nintendo, like you. Super you, CD, huh? that's interesting. You know, wow. we get into the later mod, the later Madden versions, and it uh, becomes a cover, just like uh, Sports Illustrated or something like that. Mm -hmm. But then that brings in the Madden curse. You know, people were worried that if they got on the Madden cover, there'd be a curse a, to their season. They'd have a bad season. Yeah, that is a thing. 
So it is so funny to jump up. I mean, you get all the way to like Madden 21 here. Look at that. Just it looks amazing. <laughs> I will say where they started. The Madden games are always gorgeous. I yes. will give them that. But you mentioned, I, I just, I can't stand the finesse stuff. I don't know if there, maybe there's a way to turn that off, but yeah. I don't know, man. It just they it, want I, you to do yeah. button combos instead of just yeah. if I want to spin, I should hit the circle. I believe that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, stiff arm is yep. a triangle, you know, something yep. simple like that. Yep. And they did this dynamic too. You can see it on there where the player has balance. And if I remember right, in some of one of these versions, whenever that like if you're being tackled, if they're losing their balance, you had to like do this thing with the yeah. thumbsticks to try to like keep him upright. And I'm just like, okay, it's getting a bit too, too much now. I sound like an old man. I know, I know Madden's a yeah. huge game. People are probably going to hate for this. My day, there was only a couple buttons. Probably going to get hate for it, but because it's a massive franchise, but it's funny football games. Madden has never been my favorite, even of the old ones. They weren't, you know, I think Madden set a standard of this is what a video game should be. And yeah. that's why I went to the other games. It's like, well, this is the standard. Everybody's trying to copy it. But let's go to the guy who's doing something different. Let's go to the guy that has some really cool modes. And the uh, next one we're going to cover had a really cool mode. I don't know if it was on any of the other games or not. And this next one is, you're talking about the NFL Quarterback Club 98, right? Yeah, so one of the modes in there is you could play their um, uh, like quarterback challenge, uh, throwing mm -hmm. at the moving targets, uh, doing stuff like that. Oh, well, that's cool. So it wasn't just the games; they actually had like like what they do for the All Stars, like games, mini right? games. Yeah, yeah, the Pro Bowl. Yeah, the Pro Bowl. Thank you. Uh, so it had like yeah. a Pro Bowl mode inside the quarterback club. And it's so funny. This is in sixty four, and the graphics on this actually look so much better than NFL Blitz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't play this one either. It looks good. It looks really good. What were the controls like? Uh, they weren't too bad. I don't think it used any of the up, down, left, right. To, um, it like did combos. for play calling, as I see. Oh, I see. But that, not yeah. for moves, I don't believe. Okay. It's been so long since I played it. Yeah. Some of these I want to go back and revisit. Absolutely. Know, cause, yeah. Because it's been so long. Now, but I'm that's kind of why I threw that on the list. It's just one. different game modes. Yeah. I like it. And we didn't even get into it. I know that there's football on Game Boy and a bunch of others. Oh, we're missing so many yeah, of them. Yeah. There's so many. We're just hitting some high levels of ones that we kind of enjoyed. Now, this next one I never played, and I think I'm going to try it. You just told me about this. Yeah. Um, so this I is, discovered this yeah. on the uh, Android. I've switched over to iOS. But the, it's, it's mobile. called Retro Bowl. Yeah. It's uh, really good. And this is it's the latest a, version. This is 25, by the way, Doug. This is yeah. the one I found. Um, now, that's the one I think, and uh, I'll have to ask other people, is uh, I'm new to iPhone and new to iOS. Is the Apple Arcade uh, paywalling this so I cannot get to it? Now, oftentimes with Arcade, you can you can still go to the open store and buy the game outright. Okay. Uh, or Arcade is just, if you have Arcade, it's a part of the service. Think of it kind of like Xbox Game Pass, where you can go buy the game or it may be a part of the game pass if you're paying for that. Now that's not always the case. They may still have exclusives. I've never really gotten into the Apple Arcade much. Um I will say I'm a huge fan of pixel graphics. I love the the graphics on this. Yeah. So do you just use your finger to like move him up and down the field or Yeah, so it's super easy. You know, a swipe up you'll juke or kind of move to the right. Swipe down, move left, and then if you swipe forward, it dives. And uh, it's funny that you brought up that you kind of use the dive move. Mm -hmm. uh, it works perfect here. You can always dive underneath someone trying to tackle you and get a couple more yards. How do you throw it to a, re to a so recipient? So you'll uh, draw your finger back on your screen, and then you'll kind of throw it towards who you're... Really? It, it shows an arc of your football, and you move so the arc of the football to the person you want to throw so it to. So it's like a swipe. Yeah. Well, no, it's more of a hold back. You'll hold see back. this arp form. This oh, arc form. and then you know the direction it's going to go. Of where it's going to go. Oh, oh. Right there, like it's showing. Yep, perfect. It shows a dotted line. This is cool, actually. This this would be a really good thing to kill time when you're waiting. Now, on your I have to go yeah. back on my previous statement. Oh, yeah? Because this does uh, franchise mode where you trade players. and But this makes it fun. It's not very complicated at all. You know, I like the arcadiness of it. I'm actually looking it up on my phone now. NFL. 
So this is the latest version with actual um, NFL stars. The other one is just kind of randomly named people. So if this is uh, something that I can get and not to get an Apple Arcade account. No, you don't even need an Apple Arcade, man. You can, just oh. get it. you can get it from the store right there. Well, then I'm going to download it as well right now. Dude, it says you can just get it, man. This would be fun to like just kill time when you're waiting on like, oh, wait a minute. When I tapped it, it said, get uh, Apple Arcade free for Apple Arcade. What's yeah, maybe it on? is paywalled. Ah, no. Maybe oh, you can get there's there's an older version you can get. It's just straight up retro. And that's the one I have now. Yeah. Oh, there's a college version, too. Did you know that? They just added that recently. Yeah, I think there was a lot of demand for it. Very cool. Yeah, this is now something the, just to play that would be The college fun one adds uh, scholarships. Instead of well, money cool. to draft, you get money to give people scholarships. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to play with this. This looks like fun. This looks like fun just to yeah. piddle around with when you're at the mall waiting on your wife to try on dresses. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Man, I'm glad you turned See, this is why I love this show. I always learn something new and new stuff to try. So. And hopefully we didn't spend any money. We're just buying or downloading the free apps on the phones. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, you can always go back and uh, uh, play the ROMs, which is always nice. So. You know, the uh, copies of the games that I own. Exactly. The backups, right? If yeah. Nintendo's listening. so. Yep. All right. That was fun, man. Now, I... I want to go back. I want to play some old football games. I'm going to grab Absolutely. my... I think I'm going to grab my Steam Deck later. I'm going to load up some of these, man. This is good. Now I can grab my iPhone, and I can do that too. So, yeah. This is really cool. You know, the uh, Delta app, I'm going to throw some shout out to Delta. It does an amazing job on uh, Game Delta. Boy, Super Nintendo, uh, no Genesis, no Sega stuff. Is Delta an emulator? What do you mean? Yep. Uh, okay, Delta cool. emulator, for, and it's only on iOS. But it is so good, and that's, it uh, makes your uh, stuff look beautiful. That's something well, I haven't I haven't my done. My iPads yet. in the other room, but I I, I haven't done retro uh, emulation gaming on iOS yet. It's been on my list to try, um, so I want to give it I want to give it a shot. So that's well, the crew at Delta, I believe that's the name of it, uh, are doing a great job. Cool, I'll have to check it out. So. All right, man. I think that's another one in the bag. This is fun. We have some more yeah. uh, awesome episodes coming up. Don't forget our Wired Nerdy store if you want to grab some merch. I finally got that hoodie. I'm going to wear it for one of the episodes. Very nice. And uh, it's, I'm in it's, my work attire. I tried to dress fancy for you I, today. That's okay. That's okay. It's all good. So Anyway, bring us home, Dougie. Hey, I like I said uh, earlier, thank you so much to Neo Nests. Uh, he has uh, boosted our uh, platform so much. We've got so many new subscribers. So, hey to everybody listening. Uh, don't uh, just listen to the new ones. Go back and check out the old ones. We've got a ton of great content. You know, as I'm going through, I'm looking at, we have an interview with a slap fighter. We've got Comic-Con 2023. Our very first uh, episode was the retro gaming and the Steam Deck. Great presentation by Keith. Uh, I can go on and on, but uh, don't just check out our new stuff. Go check out our old stuff. Check out some of our quick uh, retro game reviews. You beat me to it. (laughs) Thank you all for listening so much. Uh, Appreciate it. That's right. Yeah. While we do the long form podcast, uh, we also try to do retro game reviews, which, you know, are nice and short. And then they're just a walk down memory lane and introducing you to some games that you may not have played before so we have a variety of content we're going to have more guests inbound on the show that we're working on uh, as well as a special upcoming thing for doug uh, he doesn't have a clue what it is it uh, is in the closet yeah uh, uh, see don't you touch it don't you touch I was it told not to we're gonna have a special unboxing at some point here in the future so yeah. you all have a great week and we will catch you on the next one and take care thank you all